Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. I hope you're having a great day wherever you're watching from and whatever part of the day it is uh, as you're tuning in. We're grateful to have you here. You know, as we get started, uh, have you ever heard something or read something that you maybe wished you hadn't? Or maybe you learned something um, that people had misexplained or misapplied to in the past. And today we're going to look at a passage that, that I think uh, is in one of those categories. Maybe you're going to hear this and go, man, I really wish this wasn't in the Bible. Or maybe you're going to hear it and go, that's different than how I've heard this explained or how people have used this uh, with me in the past. And, and my hope is to look at this and say, hey, here's what it means. Here's what it doesn't mean for us. Uh, so Ephesians chapter 5 uh, says this. It says this, in, starting in verse 22. It says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as this, the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Now the passage does go on to explain how husbands are to love and lead their wives sacrificially. Uh, and so if you're a guy, if you're a husband tuning in, you can go ahead and shut this off and tune back in tomorrow morning uh, for your portion of it, uh, because this is not for you. Uh, that's tomorrow's episode. But, but wives, I don't know where you land with this topic. And this uh, can be an incredibly contentious and difficult subject uh, within the church. Uh, but what I want to do is, is look at some briefly in the, the time period that we have in here for your word for the day, talk about three things this doesn't mean and three things this does mean for you as a Christ follower and as a wife. So first, this does not mean that you are to be silent and go along with everything your husband says. Far too many times I've heard this passage taught and it just says, hey wives, you just need to be quiet and do whatever your husband says and, and this is crazy. I've even had conversations with couples and the wife confided in my wife or myself and she said, man, I know this is a giant mistake and problem for our family, this decision my husband's gonna make, but I just have to submit. And, I, and I'm looking and I'm like, no, that you're missing the point. God has created you as women to have incredible insight and wisdom and knowledge and situations. You are created equal, but with different roles. So it does not mean to submit and just go along and be silent in it. It also does not mean to be a doormat for poor uh, treatment or behavior. I've also sat with, with people in situations where there's abuse or neglect or, or, or treatment that's inappropriate and ill-fitting. But the wife just thinks, well, I'm just supposed to submit to this. And understand that as God explains that this is how a marriage relationship is supposed to work, it is, this is how it's supposed to work in a healthy environment where the husband is also leading and loving sacrificially as Christ loved the church. So you're not to be a doormat to it. It also doesn't mean that you become invisible and just kind of disappear in this marriage relationship in your family. Again, God has created men and women equally in his image and created them both with incredible value and contribution in their own unique ways. There are things that women can do that men cannot and vice versa. So it doesn't mean that you just become invisible. So what does this mean? Three things that, that again, briefly, I think that this means uh, if you're a wife uh, and, and woman submitting to God, it first means that you're to let your husband lead uh, yourself and lead your family. Again, this is as he's following Jesus and submitting to him, let your husband lead. And, and I know that this can be a battle. This goes back to Genesis 3. The, the tension that you may feel and who's in, who's in charge and who leads what goes back to the beginning. Adam and Eve, as they sinned, God said that there would be tension between wives and husbands, that, that the wife would not want to submit, that the husband would want to rule over in an unhealthy and domineering way. But as you both submit to Christ and follow him, let your husband lead. Secondly, respect and honor him as the spiritual leader in your household. And again, he may not be where you want him to be or in the place that you desire, but respect and honor him in the position that God has put him in, in the family that you're in. But secondly, or, or actually the third thing that I think this means is to trust God's design for life, for love, for family. See, again, from the beginning of time, this has been a place of contention amongst couples from all nations, all peoples. This has been a tension point, but it's a point where we can say, are we going to trust that God's word is true? Are we going to trust that God's plan has validity and purpose in our life today? Are we going to trust 
that when I walk in the way that God has called me to, I will find the life that I desire, I will be blessed, and I will find fulfillment and purpose. And I believe that husbands and wives, if you submit to the plan and design that God has laid out here in Ephesians 5, that your marriage, that your life will be blessed. So I pray today that you would trust and respect God's words as the ultimate authority in your life and that you would have a healthy, loving family and marriage uh, and that you would find blessing in that. Hope that you have a great day and uh, we'll see you next time.